Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. On today's episode, we're going to talk about possibly the most significant findings of the 2014 rock dust home garden field trials. So we've already established that rock dust amended soils haven't increased the yields nor the bricks readings, and they have significantly less potassium and phosphorus levels than the control. But today I'll be sharing lab results that address the two main claims of rock dust. The first, that it adds trace minerals to the soil, and the second, that it increases the nutrient density of the produce grown in it. In order to do this, I've submitted soil and tissue samples to an analytical chemistry lab for trace mineral assessment. But first, let's discuss the trial and how we set it up. We set up identical garden beds for both test groups and filled them with the same mix of compost and worm castings. A viewer selected which bed would be the rock dust and which one would be the control. The rock dust bed was amended with one pound of rock dust per square foot and no additional amendments were added to the control bed. All three of the beds received the same treatment throughout the growing season including watering, mulch, and sunlight. The same varieties of crops were placed in the same locations in each bed. A common comment that we have received is that rock dust is more efficient in poorer soils. However, these products are sold for use in home gardens. If you're anything like me, you have either started with fantastic soil or have developed it over the years. Testing rock dust in these conditions will give us an understanding of these products' effects on home garden applications. Rock dust advocates claim that by adding rock dust, you increase the trace minerals in the soil. Once those trace minerals are in the soil, the product claim is that the plants are able to uptake them and incorporate them into their tissue, hence increasing the nutrient density. In order to test this claim, we've submitted soil samples from the control and rock dust beds. And we've also submitted tissue samples from produce grown in both the control and rock dust bed. We chose peppers for the tissue analysis as they are the most commonly referred to in the literature. The peppers were picked on the same day of the same ripeness. The samples were then placed in sample jars and flash frozen. The soil and tissue samples were brought to Maxim Analytics for analysis. In order to move through the results quickly, we'll focus on the microelements that are essential for plant growth. There is no known support for the claim that other trace elements play a role in either plant or human growth. In fact, some of these elements are known to be harmful to most forms of life. The unit of measurement used in all of these readings is milligrams per kilogram. It is important to note for there to be a statistical difference there must be a difference of more than 10 times the detection limit between the sets of numbers. Surprisingly, the control group soil had nearly two times as much calcium as the rock dust soil, with 23,000 milligrams per kilogram, to the rock dust's 13,000. There was two times as much sulfur in the control group, with only 1,300 milligrams per kilogram in the rock dust group, to the 2,800 in the control. Zinc, which plays a role in cellular defense, had three times lower the concentration in rock dust than the control, with only 91 milligrams per kilogram, to the control's 290. Similarly, copper was nearly four times lower in the rock dust group, at 48, compared to the control's 180. There were no significant differences in the levels of boron, molybdenum, and nickel. The only essential elements that were higher in the rock dust group were iron and magnesium, ranging from just over double the concentration to roughly 30% more. It is important to note, however, that both groups had iron and magnesium levels that are considered to be in large surpluses. So the higher levels in the rock dust group is not likely providing any benefit. So there is something causing the lower levels of nutrients in the rock dust soil. It is possible the nutrients were taken up by the plants and fruit, resulting in less nutrients in the soil but more nutrients in the crop. So let's take a look at the plant tissue results to find out. Okay, were the peppers grown in the rock dust more nutrient dense than the ones grown in the control? Let's look at the lab results to find out. According to the lab results, there was no significant difference in the concentrations of calcium, magnesium, boron, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, molybdenum, 
and nickel. So what do we have here? There's not even one that has a significant difference between the rock dust grown and the control. As I said at the beginning of this video, these lab results address both of the core claims of rock dust. The first, that they add trace minerals to the soil, and the second, that plants grown in it will produce more nutrient-dense food. As you can see, these results clearly do not support those claims. In fact, they contradict them. That said, we'll continue the rock dust trials for at least two more years to see if it improves over time. We'll continue to submit soil samples and we'll be adding a broader range of tissue samples to the mix. I suspect this video will generate some discussion, so please share your thoughts in the description section below. I would like to give a special thanks to Maxim Analytics for helping us run these samples and analyze them. Patrick Dullin of One Yard Revolution has played a key role in delivering the video today. If you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out his channel. For links on related videos, please check out the description section below. Thank you for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.